Tonight I'd like to talk about the prayer meeting. Um, probably all of you here go to the prayer meeting, but it's always good to review uh, some of why prayer meeting is so important. In Acts chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, these are pictures of uh, one of my trips in Russia. This was a Moscow church where we gave a seminar. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. The number of names together were about 120. So we know that during these 10 days, while they were waiting for Pentecost, they were meeting every day for a prayer meeting, just like we've been doing 40 days here. Of course, I haven't been able to be with you all the time, but yes. That's right. And we really need to get back to more of that. You know, the more important it is, the more we plead. And so if we don't plead, it shows that we don't really see how important it is. So I think the, the early church is founded in prayer meetings. <laughs> and of course now we have it usually on a Wednesday night, but uh, it can be other times, you know, whatever times the church sets up for having a time of prayer. And I believe that uh, as we near the end, we're going to do that more. In uh, Acts 4.31, it says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. So... There are times when God moves mightily when we are praying. And it doesn't always happen, but I do believe the closer we are to God, the more it will happen. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with boldness. And that, I believe, is what we should be praying about. That should be the number one prayer request for the Holy Spirit. Until we have as much of the Holy Spirit as they had, we need to keep praying. And as our desire increases, then I believe, you know, more will happen and we will be able to experience what they had. Again, in, in Acts 12, verse 5, it says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, I'm not sure, that doesn't explain the details, whether they were praying at home. We know that when he got out, they were praying at someone's house. Maybe they were praying there every day. I don't know. But the key point is they were praying. And as a result of their prayer, a miracle happened. Now, I'm not sure that doesn't explain the details. Then in Acts 13, 1 through 3, it says, Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So here's another time in which they prayed. They recognized that Paul and Barnabas would not be effective workers for God if they did not receive a baptism of the Holy Spirit. So they got together and they prayed. They even laid hands on them, but they uh, even fasted here that God would really bless these workers, you know. So often we, we take on our duties, I believe, without a sense of how 
important it is to receive the Holy Spirit. And so in those days, they recognized, if we don't have God's blessing, what can we do? So they pled for God's blessing upon them. And the nice thing here wasn't so much Paul and Barnabas praying for themselves, but it was the church praying for them, that God would, you know, fill them. And this is one thing that I find really a blessing. I think I mentioned to you that I started a prayer band on, on Sabbath morning at 8 o'clock. They can't do that in every church because people live so far away, probably. But at Wildwood, we can do that. And uh, so, you know, we pray for the one that's going to preach. We pray for the Sabbath school teachers. We pray for whoever is going to be a part of the service. And I believe that it it really adds a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit when we do that. So, you know, we pray for the one that's... In Acts 16, verses 25 to 26, it says, And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. That's a pretty powerful prayer. Then all of a sudden, an earthquake happens. I didn't give this to you before, did I? <laughs> I need to keep track of what I give, but uh, I didn't think I had. Now, in Malachi chapter 3, 16, it says, Then they feared the Lord, they that feared the Lord, spake often to one another, one to another, excuse me, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So, here we find that even in the Old Testament, there were people who recognized the importance of praying. And as a result of their prayers, a record was made of their prayers. Sometimes uh, groups do that. You know, you put down your prayer request, and then when the answer comes, you put the answer in there. And it's really thrilling that uh, God does hear prayers and He does bring answers. This church was founded in prayer because the Millerite movement was very involved in praying. And in Life Sketches, page 188 and 9, it says, Our interest for each other increased. We prayed much with and for one another. Now, I don't think as Adventists we're known for that now. But maybe after this 40 days of prayer, you will be here. It sounds to me like they just love to be able to get together and pray for each other. You know, it's good to put in prayer requests. That's a blessing, too. But we need each other's prayers. And that's what they were doing. They were pleading with God for their brother, their sister, uh, and God really blessed. It says, We assembled in the orchards and groves to commune with God and to offer up our petitions to Him. Feeling more clearly in His presence when surrounded by His natural works. And we can't always do that, but in the good weather, we could. And so, uh, the, the group prayer was something that permeated the Millerites. And many groups, you know, met together and played with God for all kinds of blessings. They expected Jesus was going to come. So, of course, you need to rise above your weaknesses, right? And you've got to take the gospel to everybody. And so there's a lot of things that are stirring their heart, and they realize we can't do this if we don't pray for each other. And I think 
you know, even though Satan tries to keep peace as long as he can, but I think we're, we're entering a different time now, and we can expect difficulties to come upon us before very long. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's true, because God was so uh, visibly there. In Gospel Workers, page uh, 425 and 6, it says, If we prayed more in secret, we should be able to pray more intelligently in public. So our public ability to pray is based on our praying at home in our sacred time of prayer. When engaged with our brethren in public worship, we could add to the interest of the meeting. For we should bring with us some of the atmosphere of heaven, and our worship would be a reality and not a mere form. I hope you're, uh, you're not like most Adventists. I would say that most Adventists that come uh, today they they kind of do it out of habit, you know, and they feel guilty if they don't keep the Sabbath. So they come to church. There's others that might feel like, wow, you know, spiritually, I got wiped out this week. But I hope uh, when I come to church, I can get a blessing that's going to help me for the next week. But when you look at what it says here, that hinders everybody. That hinders the whole church. Well, people come like that. No visitors and those not of our faith, of course. We, we don't expect them to, to come already on fire because of their own prayer life at home. But if we all came with a very, you know, consistent, involved uh, prayer life from day by day, when we got together as a church more would happen. It, it would, there would be a bigger fire as a result of, of that. I think that's what it means here. Um, it says, those about us can soon tell whether we are in the habit of praying or not. So as people listen to our prayers even, they say, well, you know, that person, I know they, they must pray a lot. If the soul is not drawn out in prayer in the closet and while engaged in the business of the day, the lack will be manifest in the prayer meeting. I don't think anyone should stay away because we need to, you know, build up. We can catch some of the fervor of others maybe, but it's better if we can all come together already. Uh, well... Uh, prayed for that week, yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we need both. The public prayers will be dry and formal, consisting of repetitions and customary phrases, and they will bring darkness rather than light into the meeting. So the way people pray in public is based on praying at home. And if they're not praying at home, when they come to the public and they pray, it puts a, a dampening influence on the meeting. And it, it doesn't have fire in it. Uh, I haven't done a lot. I mean... If there's a need, like somebody calls me and I can tell they got some problems that uh, need prayer, yeah, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, most people appreciate prayer, unless they're really antagonistic toward, 
you know, religion. Here's a, a beautiful promise. Those who appreciate the words of Christ will not turn aside from the prayer meeting. So when we call time to pray, then, uh, you know, those that really appreciate Christ will be there because they know the enjoyment and the power of praying together. Well, yeah, yeah, and this is one of them, praying at home, so that when you pray in the prayer meeting, it's more powerful. Heavenly Places, page 92, praying together will bind hearts to God in bonds that will endure. So, yes, there's a benefit to praying alone, but when we pray together, it binds our hearts to God, it says. And another one from uh, Signs of the Times, January 15, 1880. Prayer, faithful, earnest prayer, will move the arm that moves the world. So it's amazing. God has arranged it so that when we pray, He moves. Now, He could move without us, but I think He's trying to train us to pray. <laughs> He's trying to help us realize the need to pray. Okay, yeah. The minister of Christ must pray if he would have the refreshing from the presence of God. The church must pray much if they would walk in the light as he is in the light. So this, you know, shows the importance, and I'm glad you're taking this time to pray together, not just pray at home, but to pray together. Now here's the one that sort of affected my title from, uh, uh, I'm not sure what PAM is, but a prayer meeting will always tell the true interest of the church members in spiritual and eternal things. I was talking with someone here last week, and they were telling about the things they had to cancel to be here for this prayer. But, you know, it shows our interest to pray together is revealed as to whether we meet together for a prayer meeting or not. The prayer meeting is as the pulse to the body. It denotes the true spiritual condition of the church. A lifeless, backslidden church has no relish for the prayer meetings. <coughs> Originally that was in selections from testimonies to the managers and workers in our institutions. So, as we think about a prayer meeting, it needs to have life in it. It, it can't be dead. Otherwise, you know, I mean, still people shouldn't excuse themselves. If we know it's dead, we should liven it up. <laughs> you know, do something to liven it up. But uh, how much better it is if the prayer meeting is full of life. Fourth Testimony 629 says, The reason why so many are not desirous of attending prayer meeting and of engaging in religious exercises is that their minds are devoted to other things. Too involved in life as though our big objective is to succeed in this life. Really, our big objective is to get ourselves ready for heaven and get other people ready for heaven. That's the big objective. And the rest is just to 
you know, make ends meet so we can do that. And that's why I believe uh, the meetings where we get together and pray, and even the other ones, this one's broader than just the prayer meeting, but the meetings are important. Do you have a problem with Sabbath school here? You know, not everybody showing up, just mainly coming to church. Seems like that often happens in churches today. But if we are really spiritually alive, we're going to consider Sabbath school important as well as church. And the times that the church sets aside for for prayer. Fourth Testimonies 461. When the Spirit of God shall work upon the heart, cleansing the soul temple of its defilement of worldliness and pleasure-loving, all will be seen in the prayer meeting. That's pretty strong. Now, I preached this sermon at Wildwood, and the next prayer meeting I had 50 people there. <laughs> but it only lasted one week. Normally, we have 20 Maybe 25. And pleasure loving all will be seen. That's pretty strong. I preached this sermon at Wildwood. Yeah. The next prayer meeting, I had 50 people there. Well, one thing we're going to do is try to pass out some invitations. You know, just pass out a card inviting people to the prayer meeting. But maybe we'll get to that as well. <laughs> Steps to Christ, page 98, seek every opportunity to go where prayers want to be made. I realize there could be too many appointments, but generally that's not our problem. Generally, we don't have enough appointments. So it says, seek every opportunity to go where prayers want to be made. Those who are really seeking for communion with God will be seen in the prayer meeting, faithful to do their duty, and earnest and anxious to reap all the benefits they can gain. They will improve every opportunity of placing themselves where they can receive the rays of light from heaven. Here's one in regard to students. We have quite a few students there at Wildwood, and I'm sure some students come here from the college. It says, many students have made their studies the first great object. Is that really supposed to be the first great object? Notice, and have neglected prayer, and absented themselves from the Sabbath school and the prayer meeting. So this is not wise. The students would do better in classes if they had more prayer. I think this is our problem. We don't realize what is the cause of efficiency. I had an interesting experience yesterday and today. Uh, I, I think maybe yesterday I was working in my own wisdom, but I was trying to get a car on a dolly to take it down to the scrap yard. And so I was pulling the car up on the dolly because it didn't run. And somehow I made a mistake and it went, the wheels went right over the top of the dolly and it just landed down on the frame right on the dolly. So I tried and I tried, you know, and it seemed like everything I would do would not work. So today, I was really pressed for time, and I said, Lord, please, I really have to have help. I don't have time to spend working on this thing. I've got to get it fixed quickly. And would you believe the first try, I got it back up on the dolly. First try. So, you know, again, the Lord was trying to help me realize more prayer makes everything go better. But it's so easy for us to put our attention on what needs done, whether it's students studying their books or whether it's us on other uh, things. 
And then we're not efficient because we didn't pray enough. Uh, I think I did have something happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the Lord guided you. In Heavenly Places, page 92, it says, Let small companies assemble in the evening, at noon, or in the early morning to study the Bible. Let them have a season of prayer that they may be strengthened, enlightened, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. You know, there, you hear a lot of talk about small groups uh, getting together. Well, here's one of the uh, things we're supposed to do, get together in small groups with people that are nearby us and, and have a time to pray and study. Let them have a season of prayer that they may be strengthened, enlightened, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. If you yourselves will open the door to receive it, a great blessing will come to you. Angels of God will be in your assembly. You will feed upon the leaves of the tree of life. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It's like we're eating. From the tree of life. 